Okay, we're going to move on to the next lesson, guys. And it's, it's talking about braces and dictionaries and uh, dictionary entries and stuff like that. Okay? Let's see how braces are used for a special text within dictionary entries. Dictionary entries. Eclipse dictionary entries use braces to surround text that must not be inserted literally. This includes paragraph symbols, punctuation marks, prefixes, suffixes, and other entries that you don't necessarily make every day. The Globaling and Dictionary Entries dialogs offer help for creating special entries. You can either press Control e or drop down the list. Where entries require you to type, as in the case of a suffix, your cursor is automatically positioned at the spot where you need to type text. While globaling, you can use shortcuts to insert symbols for paragraphs or punctuation. Thus, F2 opens the speaker list, so you can choose a name that's already there, or insert a new one. F3 inserts the symbol for a question, and F4 an answer. To insert the symbol for a comma, press control comma. Likewise, control period. For a quick question mark, press control slash. There's also control semicolon and control colon, which would involve the shift key. Control tilde inserts the symbol for a lock space. However, if you have an entire phrase whose words you want to keep together, you can use the lock button. Press the lock button again and you'll get hyphens. Press it a third time to get back to regular spaces. It's a bunch of shortcuts, but it can really save you time. <clears throat> that makes sense? So what's the difference between doing the lock with the tilde is to just leave it at with just plain spaces in between each word? Does that make sense? Let's see how braces are used for a special text within is are used for a special text within dictionary entries. Eclipse dictionary entries use braces to surround text that must not be inserted literally. Okay, y'all understand what it's saying there? When you put these when you put these brackets in there, mm -hmm. Eclipse already knows what to do. You don't have to tell it what to do. You don't have to put a for answer period space 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 to where it, you know, it already knows what to do just by putting those brackets. So you don't you don't have to put you don't have to do anything else. That's all you have to do for your question answer symbol. And you'll see when you get started. I mean, you got you guys are so much more um, advanced than like I was, because like when I first got out, I had to use somebody else's dictionary. We didn't even have dictionaries. I had to use someone else's because we didn't really do it in school. So I mean, I had somebody else's dictionary. Well, you know how many different ways you can write the answer symbol? Literally about 50,000. It's, it's some astronomical number of how many different ways you can do it by leaving one letter off with as many letters are in the, the answer symbol. Does that make sense to you guys? So every time, you know, and it's, it's going to know. Auto Magic Keys is going to know. So, I mean, you know, you're going to put it in, it's going to go in your dictionary or whatever, but it's, it's going to know. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, and when you do it, you know, it just gives you the shortcut, you know, of, of just doing the A with the bracket. So, the brackets already know, you know, what it means when you put the A in there, the capital A in there. It already knows that it's the answer symbol. Make sense? Okay. This includes paragraph symbols, punctuation marks, Brief. And on the punctuation marks, punctuation mark. You know, it already knows. It already knows the different things. So it it already knows. Once you do the brackets with the comma, it already knows. Put the comma space next word. You don't have to put the comma space already, because then it's going to have two spaces when you do it. Then it's going to look messed up. You know, so it already knows. Once you put that bracket, it knows what to do. Question mark. 
any of that stuff. Dash is, it already knows what to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Prefixes, suffixes, and other entries that you don't necessarily make every day. On the prefixes and suffixes, you want to put it in there the way that it's the way that it's supposed to be. So you know when it's when it's ed and it's at the end of a word that ends with e, you don't have to worry about that because Eclipse already knows chop the one e off, add the ed. So it's not going to have two e's at the end of it. It already knows if you put it in there correctly, with the brackets, caret means put the word together at the end, ed it already knows what to do. So even if it's IED, it already knows to do that. Make sense? Same thing on a, on a prefix. You know, on the, on the prefix is different because it's gonna be before, you know. So it's gonna have it right here. You're gonna do the word first then. You have to be careful because, you have to be careful where you put this carrot because that's where it knows where to put the word whether to put it at the beginning or the end. Make sense? The Globaling and Dictionary Entries dialogs offer help for creating special entries. You can either press Control E or drop down the list. See, and, and when you push Control E, it gives you all of these different um, categories of what you want to do. So it, you know, if you want to put a speaker and it knows to put the speaker in there, it already knows. That's the symbol for it. So then it's going to bring up your, it's already going to know to bring up your speaker list. Once you, once you put it in like this, it's going to know bring up your speaker list. Does that make sense? Like on paragraph type, stuff like that. It's going to give you the different options of what par what kind of different paragraphs and stuff like that. So that's what that's what this little thing means. That's what the little X means. Eclipse already knows to bring up a certain list. Does that make sense? Where entries require you to type, as in the case of a suffix, your cursor is automatically positioned at the spot where you need to type text. While globaling, you can use shortcuts to insert symbols for paragraphs or punctuation. Thus, F2 opens the speaker list, so you can choose a name that's already there, or insert a new one. F3 inserts the symbol for a question, and F4, an answer. To insert the symbol for a comma, press control comma. Likewise, control period. For a quick question mark, press control slash. There's also control semicolon and control colon, which would involve the shift key. Control tilde inserts the symbol for a lock space. However, if you have an entire phrase whose words you want to keep together, you can use the lock button. Press the lock button again, and you'll get hyphens. Press it a third time to get back to regular spaces. It's a bunch of shortcuts, but it can really save you time. Is that what you were asking about? Like if you do, what's the difference between leaving it like that and leaving it with a tilde? Or is there not a difference? Well, like if you have like Mr. Davis, you would set up Mr. with a tilde. That way, when you use it in a paragraph, so that every time you put Mr., it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's with Smith, Davis. Yeah, it keeps it together. Argentina, well, the, whatever. I, I understand that, but with the tilde is like at the door store. It's a store name. Yeah. So is that just going to keep it on the same line? Like if it's at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll keep it together. Because okay. you don't want it. You don't want it separated at the end of a sentence. You know, and, and I think that's. I think that's what you're asking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Okay. And, and you'll get hyphens. Press it. Roll tilde. Inserts the symbol for a lock space. However, if you have an entire phrase whose words you want to keep together, you can use the lock button. Press the lock button again, and you'll get hyphens would involve the shift key. Control tilde inserts the symbol for a lock space. However, if you have an entire phrase whose words you want to keep together, you can use the lock button. Press the lock button again, and you'll get hyphens. So if, you know, if you have, um, 
Christus Santa Rosa Hospital, and you want to keep that together, then that's how you would define it. And you just keep pushing the lock, and it knows to change it. Okay. Make sense? So do you recommend, like, the Mr. Mrs. Doctor? Mrs. Doctor. We should oh, set yeah. it up like that. Yeah. With the lock. Yeah. So we'll put the Because you never place. want Mr. at the end and, and Smith. At the beginning of a no. new sentence. Right. Your Honor. Never want those separated. Want you know, when they're talking about the court, you never want those separated. So you always want that tilde. Does that make sense, guys? You up? All right. <laughs> now, on, real fast, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. Do you capitalize the line or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's like. Uh, it's part of the name. Yeah. But I mean, it's and it's kind of weird because like the court. When they talk about the court, and they're talking about your honor, the isn't capitalized. The court is, but your honor is. Your and honor is. Yeah, okay. I agree with you. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, and that's that's what what keeps the words together is the tildes. Okay, does that make sense? Press it a third time to get back to regular spaces. It's a bunch of shortcuts, but it can really save you time. All right. Y'all got that? That's good. So this kind of gives you some of the different uh, options of what you can do, you know, with some of that stuff. Um, and, and I think I've, I've kind of told you guys, F2 kind of gets you into the... Uh, into the field. Let's see if we're real. <clears throat> and brings you into your speaker list. Okay, so say you're here, you want to put in, you know, your attorney, F2, brings up your speaker list. So, you know, you want to go through there and, and put it in and say it's, uh, it's Miss Rayford. And then that puts it in, okay? But say you want to global it throughout the whole thing, well, that's my, that's my symbol for attorney three. So let's just put it back in there. So say I'm here at attorney three, you want to go in there, control G globals it, brings it up, brings up your attorney list. You know what? I want it as Miss Rayford every time throughout this hearing. You choose Miss Rayford, enter. I don't want it in my main. I don't want that symbol to come up as Miss Rayford every time because she's not going to be attorney three every time. Control J. I want it in my job dictionary. So control J puts it in your job dictionary. It tells me that I want it in my job dictionary. Yes, I do. That changes it. Are you sure that you want to change this globally throughout the whole thing? So it gives you different options every time. So, I mean, it, it always has certain backups to everything. Does that make sense? So it doesn't just do it every time. It's like, oh man, I just wanted it that one time. I didn't want it the whole time. It gives you options. Do you want to global it throughout the whole thing? Yes, I do. You push enter. Now every time that attorney three comes up, it's going to be Miss Rayford. Does that make sense? Do I get that?
Okay, and that's just some of the some of the different uh, what it looks like when you go in there and define the different option the different options of what you want. So when you want a Q, that's the brackets with the Q A, you know, a quoted question paragraph. Does that make sense? Okay, parentheticals, um, new continuation, decimal points, strokes. Um, auto includes you know for like breaks and stuff like that um, I never really use that one. what is that? I don't know, fake and translate interesting mm -hmm. Let's see if it gets Oh, it gives you the oh on an untranslate. So if it, it if it comes up as an untranslate, that's how you define it. If you want it to come up as an untranslate, you know for certain, that's how it's going to come up. That's the symbol for it. Okay, does that make sense? And here, this is just kind of a little exercise of, you know, what uh, what you can do. So you go through, you press T. Alt G, it gives you, it already kind of knows. So it already gives you the option right there. Number one, because it is the answer symbol. Enter, and that's how you define it, okay? So now it's in your dictionary all the time. Go to the next T. Find it, it already knows. Press the one. That makes sense? <laughs> Alright. Now it's gonna talk about punctuation and you know we we kinda went over that or whatever and what the different symbols are for the punctuation and put in the brackets, it already knows what to do with the punctuation. So you don't have to go through and tell it, you know, I need, you know, a comma space and then the word. Or if you do a colon, you don't need the colon, space, space, capital. It already knows to do that. And that's just how you define it. Colon, hyphen, dashes, slash, um, on the on the delete space, it keeps it together. So the, the carry keeps it together. Um, lock space keeps it together. So like you know, the carry is for you know like Mr. And Mrs. Doctor. When it's a specific Mr. and Mrs. Specific Doctor stuff like that, that's what that's for. Does that make sense? Locals. When you write quickly, your stereo machine may register separate strokes as if they were written at the same time. Eclipse composite strokes as if they were written at the same time. Eclipse composite dictionary entries can unscramble this mess. This one dictionary entry performs three steps. First, it creates a question paragraph, then it inserts the word yes, then it ends the sentence with a period. Here a suffix s was written immediately followed by a question stroke. Eclipse understands a glance at the list, it's choice three. Of course I could have also gotten help from the special entries list, but because of the global magic features, even that help was not needed. I'll place this in my main dictionary. Does that make sense? about how you set it up in your dictionary because it's very important the way that you set it up because if you set it up wrong you know you you put the s in the wrong position say you put 
we'll go through it again, and then I'll kind of explain as, as it's going along. When you write quickly, your, when you write quickly, your stenom machine may register separate strokes as if they were written at the same time. Eclipse composite dictionary entries can unscramble this mess. This one dictionary entry performs three steps. So say you went through there and you put yes, question, period, it's going to set it up totally different. So you have to make sure you know what you were doing there. You know, if you wanted it, if it was a, if it was a suffix at the end of the sentence, and they kind of did it in a little bit further up, and they'll kind of show it again. But if you did it as a, su as, a, as a suffix to the end of the word for the end of the sentence, press the, press the um, question symbol and then press yes, then you have, to, you have to define it correctly. I know that sounds kind of stupid, but you have to define it correctly because if not, it's going to define it the way that you put it in there. So you have to know exactly what you were writing to know what to do. In certain in in the certain situation, does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Steps. First, it creates a question paragraph. Then it inserts the word yes. Then it ends the sentence with a period. See, and you don't have to capitalize the yes. It already knows to capitalize it. But if you capitalize the yes, then it's going to capitalize the yes every time you do it. So if it's in, you know. I'm trying to think of an instance where, let's just say it, it wasn't like this, and you capitalize, it was just yes, and you capitalize the yes. Every time yes comes up, regardless of whether it's in the middle of the sentence, it's going to capitalize the yes. You don't have to do it. The software already knows at the beginning of the sentence, it's always going to cap it. It's always going to cap that word. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about putting you know, the space, space, cap, you know, for the next one at the, because of the period. It already knows what to do. Okay? Here a suffix S was written immediately followed by a question stroke. Eclipse understands a glance at the list, it's choice three. Of course I could have all... Did y'all see that? Y'all understand what it was doing there? Of course. I could have also gotten help from the special entries list, but the list, it's choice through. Okay, what what it was doing there was was you left the S at the end of the at the end of the sentence, but you put it on with your question symbol, so it gives you the different options right here, you know. And the correct one was see, it gives you the option of well, did you mean question and then S to start that sentence because that's what it's going to do if that's what you chose right there. Or did you mean it's a suffix with the question and you just stacked it? Okay? Three. Of course I could have also gotten help from the special entries list, but because of the global magic features, even that help was not needed. I'll place this in my main dictionary. And it already knows to put the S at the end of bottles and the question. So it doesn't matter if it was entries right here. And you put entry with the S and the question at the same time, it's going to know to do IES. That makes sense? You don't have to put IES. It already knows to do it. All you have to do is put in there that it means um, to put the S in there, that it's more than one. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it is what, is what Eclipse is telling you. You don't have to overdo it. The artificial intelligence is going to take care of it. All right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All of that? Any questions there? And here it's just kind of giving you some options of if you stack, you know, what what the definition would be. So, I mean, and I don't, I don't know, they were starting to teach you guys to stack some of your stuff, weren't they? Like question or, you know, yes and no and, and stack the thing to keep it as one stroke. I know that they were doing that oh, there for a little bit or some of the students were doing it. A lot of my strokes are like that. Are they? Making 
Yeah. On purpose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Which is good. Yeah, extensions. I, I mean, it's a good thing if you can if you can read it and you know what it's doing. Great, you know it cuts out a stroke. You know, so that's it's good. So that's how you would define it. You have to know how to define these. You know, it's really important if you're going to do that type of writing. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was right here. It's just kind of giving you some of those examples. You know, if if you want to do that. I mean, there there's three strokes right there, guys. Three strokes, if that's how you're writing. You just eliminated three strokes. So, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty good. If you, can, if you know what you're doing, then it's great. But if not, you wanna be careful and you need to know how to, how to define it because if not, then it's, I mean, you're not doing yourself any justice. You're not doing yourself any good. But if you know how to define it, then you're gonna be way good. Okay, and it's just kind of explaining what we just went over. And this this is just kind of a little exercise, you know, of, of doing it, you know, whatever. So you you know you just define it. It already knows that it's the period, or it gives you the option of of if that's what you meant. Press number one, enter. That's what it does. Capitalize the next one. T, it's the same thing. You just kind of misstroked it or whatever, so it's no big deal. The